very, very sad, sad thing. Well, here's the X-band radar. And we expected there to be severe weather in southwest Kansas, which is where Greensburg is. So we drove out to southwest Kansas. And there, in a highly populated part of Kansas, <laughs> we blew out a tire. We did not have a spare. We didn't have a jack. My cell phone wasn't able to get anything. A good Samaritan came by, had another carrier. I called AAA. <laughs> And uh, someone from the town of Protection, Kansas, came out and uh, they had a spare tire. They put it on and we drove down to Protection, Kansas. Um, there were some little clouds along the dry line. I was at wit's end because off to my southwest, there was a thunderstorm that we could see on the horizon and it was producing a tornado. I thought, well, that's it. That's it. I give up. I'm going to change professions. <laughs> so, it's now 8 o'clock at night, or close to 8 o'clock at night, and we're now ready to go. Storms were coming up from the south, and I don't want to speak above you or below you. How many of you know what a splitting storm is? Most of you know. Okay, but oftentimes supercells split into left moving parts and right moving parts. The right moving parts rotate cyclonically and go on to produce the tornadoes. The anti-cyclonic parts um, uh, usually just produce big hail. A lot of left moving splits from the storm to our south were coming up at us. We had, to we had to test the radar. We had to collect some data. So I said, okay, let's just go out and collect data on these junky left moving storms. We got a police escort. <laughs> we found the spot and we set up the radar. And all of a sudden, one of these storms that I thought was a left mover, you know, it looks like a wall cloud. You now it looks like a tail cloud. All of a sudden, no way the radio went off, the alarm, tornado warning. But well, we can't be this lucky. It's starting to get dark. Then funnel cloud starts to appear. All right, let's collect data. I don't like to collect data at night, it's dangerous, but we're sitting in one spot, let's collect some data. This is a composite picture that I took for my video camera. What I did was I just panned it from one side to another, illuminated by lightning. There's a tornado, a small tornado. Well, this is what happened that night. This is from the Dodge City <coughs> Weather Service Forecast Office. We were sitting down over here at Protection. Talk about luck. We documented with the radar one, two, three, four tornadoes, and then the fifth tornado just before it hit Greensburg, Kansas. We had no idea it was hitting Greensburg, Kansas. All we knew was we were just collecting radar data. I didn't look at a map. And uh, just about 10 or 15 minutes before it hit Greensburg, Kansas, our battery started to go. The, the radar operates on battery. So we shut it off, just as the tornado was about to go into Greensburg. So let me just show you. This is where the radar is, near the damage paths. This is some of our data. Um, I better go through this really quickly. There's the first tornado, the hook, and the vortex signature. This is at uh, about eight, a little before 8.30. I'm skipping time. Uh, at 8.45, we have one hook. Tornado number one, tornado number two, tornado number three, and tornado number four, each associated with its own vortex signature. Okay, four vortex signatures. So we can see all four tornadoes at once. And then, at eight o'clock, there's the remains of tornado number four. All of a sudden, we got a tremendous surge. Green coming towards you, tremendous surge. And now things changed. We went from a series of small cyclic tornadoes to the monster, the big tornado that hit Greensburg, Kansas. Let me show you what it looked like on radar. Polarimetric radar. Wow. Here's the hook. Oops, sorry. Um, there's the hook with two eyes. Two eyes in that hook. Um, this is ZDR, differential reflectivity, and rho HV. 
get used to it. Next red, next red radars are being outfitted with polar metric capabilities right now. And pretty soon, people on TV and the Weather Channel are going to see this everywhere. Um, polar metric radar can distinguish between rain, hail, flying cows, and so on. <laughs> and low ZDR and low rho HV are characteristic of things that tumble that have no preferred orientation. We have low rho HV in here, low ZDR. That turns out to be the debris signature from the tornado. It's two kilometers wide. That debris signature, two kilometers wide. You know, that's way over a mile. This was one hell of a tornado. This is before it even hit Greensburg. So we're, we're seeing, you know, tree branches and things like that. Okay. Uh, it's just about, it's getting ready to hit Greensburg. I think it hits Greensburg about um, almost 15, 10, 10 minutes after this. And there's Z and uh, ZDR, Rho HV. Look at all that in the Rho HV. And there, my, one of my graduate students did the unfolding. It wasn't easy. Uh, we have fairly strong winds. They're probably about 80 meters per second at this point. But I want you to notice how far apart the poles are. Um, that is very far. That's a tremendous distance. That's several kilometers. So this is almost like a mesocyclone that has tornadic intensity. That's pretty amazing. Now, I want to show you one other amazing thing about this tornado. Not the first time we've seen it, but this is a great case. I want to show you one volume scan. Look at the eye, the tornado, the eye, the hook, the eye, two eyes, they're watching you, <laughs> two eyes, but we're going to focus on that eye, so to speak. And there's the eyes, appears at 9.4 degrees elevation angle, 10.8 degrees, 12.2 degrees, 13.2 degrees, 14.4 degrees, 15.7 degrees, look at that eye, 17 degrees, we still have the eye, 18.1 degrees, 19.4 degrees, 20.6 degrees, that's 14 kilometers above the ground. So this hole associated with the eye of the tornado extends from the ground to the anvil. Just amazing, just amazing. 